In this video, I will show you the KUKA smart pad and the most important functions of the smart pad. And at the end of the video, I will show you the difference to the smart pad too. Well, enjoy. Hi guys, my name is Werner Hampel from RobTech. I have been working with robots for 30 years and I show you now the KUKA smart pad. Let's start. We start from the back side of the smart pad. We have three enable switches on the back side. You can choose which one you want. You need to enable the robot to uh, start movements or start programs. Uh, you only can uh, switch on his drives while one of these buttons is enabled. I prefer that button. Um, nearby is the start button, which I can uh, use very, very nice here uh, with my fingers. I can enable the robot and start the robot with one hand. Okay, uh, that's the back side. Uh, just remember that if you Push too hard, robot stops again. This is an enable button. There is a switch in the middle. And then when you push it right, you see in the front that uh, the green signs for, for movement, um, it's enabled. Okay, let's go uh, to the front. First button I will show you is that one. If you push that button, you have 30 seconds, uh, then you can disconnect your smart pad. The second switch here is the uh, uh, operation mode switch. I enable that and then I can choose test one, which means manual mode, test two, which means manual mode in full automatic speed. Then we have automatic mode and external mode. Uh, I explain you that in further videos. We go back. Here is an emergency stop. When you push that button, the robot and the whole environment has to stop where the robot works. And here is a 6D mouse. Um, you can use this mouse to control the robot. That's for experts. Uh, please have a try what happens there. If I push that button, the robot will move. If I pull, it moves in that direction. If I push it to here, it exactly moves like the robot is. And I can move it up and down. And if I turn it, it's moving like that. I can make that and I can turn it like that. So if you like, try this uh, mouse, 6D mouse. If you're a beginner, I would say uh, you should prefer that buttons. You can see this is X plus in world coordinate system. You can choose for your mouse another coordinate system than uh, for your buttons here. Okay, X, Y, Z. Um, on the button here, we have the play symbol and that means we can choose the override of the program. You, you see it here, how fast the robot moves. And uh, here we have the hand symbol, which means how fast the robot moves when I move it with the buttons or uh, the mouse, if I choose 100% here, the robot moves faster. This is to move very accurate, I reduce the override from uh, the hand. On the bottom here, I have some menu uh, signs I can choose. Depends on in which menu we are, we will see this later. Here on the left, I have buttons to control the gripper for example. Uh, you can program that to your needs. Yeah, We have a docking system and I can uh, open and close the docking system uh, to do that 
or open and close the grip button. Uh, here we have a play plus button and play minus button. Play plus means uh, the robot moves forward the program and we also can move backwards the program. That one uh, has more explanations. Um, it only uh, can move backwards that what we moved before forward. Forget it. Uh, use the forward button. This is the stop button. If you start a program in automatic, you can stop the program here. And that sign means uh, you can choose your keypad here and you can write something uh, with that thing. Okay, let's go into the uh, PC. I show you the same what is here, but for better resolution of the screen, um, I show it here. Okay? Okay, let's look inside the touch screen. Uh, here you see uh, the KUKA symbol, which means you can, you can open the menu. There you see the submit interpreter. I explain you in further videos. That button is to cancel and reset programs. You have to cancel a program if you want to select a new program. So, and if it's already canceled, uh, that button is gray when uh, otherwise it's black or if a program is started, it's green. You will see this in further videos. This is um, the mode, the operation mode the robot has. Now we are in manual mode. That means test one. Here you can see the override. You have two overrides. One is the play override. Uh, that's the override from the program. When is the push the play button, uh, the robot plays with that override the program. So 100 is 100% and 50% is half of speed. And the manual um, override, that is when we move the robot by mouse or by the buttons here, uh, you can reduce the speed. Here we have a little sign, uh, which means when we start the program, and here is one man walking, uh, or woman, and uh, then the robot will continue the program as long as I push the play button. When it chooses the second one, then the robot um, stops at every movement, all that, uh, that signal stuff. It will play like on, on, on the man walking uh, sign, but uh, when I start here, the robot stops every movement and I have to push the play button again. And the single step um, movement is that for that you have to start every single con uh, um, command in the program so uh, you can debug very well with that sign. Okay, here I can choose the tool I want to use. So we have different TCPs, yeah, if you don't know what a TCP is, look at my other videos uh, with the TCP, you can choose the TCP and the base. And you know, also you can say an external tool, whatever. Um, we skip that one, this is just, um, if you move very small steps, uh, one millimeters, uh, you can shoot this at. Normally, you don't use this. Here, you can see uh, the mouse movement is now in axis mode. So when I'm uh, moving with the mouse on, on the smart pad, uh, it, uh, it is in axis mode, world mode, in base or in tool mode. You can select it here. And that sign is for the buttons to move the robot. So it can have uh, that in a different mode than the mouse. Here's a cooker symbol. In uh, our smart pad in real, uh, we have that on the right button. Here you can see uh, individual menu inside the touchscreen. It changes uh, 
whatever you have selected, it changes uh, what you can do here. I cancel the program and you see there are different things uh, you can choose. Good. Uh, here are the symbols for that buttons here and here is your project for uh, work visual. I will show you that in a further video. Okay, let's go into the main menu. When I choose that cooker symbol here, cooker symbol here or here, um, I can go into the main menu by clicking the house button. From there, we have our most important uh, points here on the left side. If you choose file, the important thing is to archive, to make a backup from your robot. Uh, if you use your USB on your uh, car CP, which means the smart pad, or the USB on the cabinet, um, that one is the controller. You have USB stick, uh, USB ports there, and you take your USB stick and you make a backup by clicking all. You have a backup of all which is in the controller. If you have some problems with your robot and you need the cooker support, uh, you can uh, save a, a diagnostic file on your USB and send it to Kuka that they can help you better if you have uh, hardware issues. That is the uh, car RC uh, diag or log data. Yeah, forget about uh, the rest. You need that one. And to restore your backup, you can choose that. Choose where from, where your USB stick sticks and you can restore your backup again. If you have any faults. Um, let's go to the next uh, button here. This is configuration. You can configure uh, your pro uh, your robot. For example, the inputs and outputs. You can uh, change the names. Uh, you can say uh, your automatic addresses. Uh, you can uh, change your status keys. That once uh, you program here. Um, you can change the user group. We will change now to KUKA, uh, to, to expert, by, uh, by clicking the next menu section, the configuration, that opens a sub-menu where you can change the configuration of your inputs and outputs. Um, submit interpreters, the status keys, which means that keys here, you can configure what uh, you want to see here. You can change the user group, which means the group uh, which has a different right. As long as you're a an user, you can start and stop programs, you can teach uh, positions if it's uh, allowed, but if you want to see more, you have to change to expert. The standard experts uh, security word is KUKA. So now it looks a bit different and have more possibilities to control the robot. Uh, the safe configuration you shouldn't touch and all the other things. Uh, here you have gripper spot te uh, tech. Uh, you can change some other things. Please don't touch it if you don't know what you do. Uh, anyway, the configuration tab is for programmers. Okay, let's see what happens in display. In display, you can see such important things like uh, how much energy the robot needs. Uh, I think don't, this don't care, but sometimes you need to see your digital in or outputs to analyze what is maybe the robot waiting for. And you can choose here uh, outputs and you see if an output is one, you see it here uh, because it's green, otherwise it's gray. Gray means zero, one is green. And the input you can see um, here is no input. Um, you should name the inputs here um, by clicking that button. 
to see what really happens. For example, gripper open, gripper close. Okay, that's a display. You can see your actual position. This is maybe interesting. Uh, if it changed to um, axis, you can see how many degrees the axis are. And if some axis is near his software limit switch, you can check that here in display actual positions. You can see your variables, uh, some other stuff, diagnosis. I think you don't need this. So, but startup. Startup, we have some things uh, we need to, uh, I show you that in, in the robots channel here, uh, how to calibrate uh, the tool. Yeah, you saw that in a video before. Uh, the base, you will see it in a video here, a fixed tool, calibration points, etc., etc. How to master the robot. The robot has to be mastered. Uh, I will show that uh, how to do this. You can update your software, uh, your, your software. Please be careful with that. Um, and one of the most important things is the network co configuration. If you start programming your robot, you need to know your network address. You can check this here. Good, let's go um, to the service button here. That is one thing uh, you can use to go back to your Windows. Sometimes you want to install maybe some uh, games. So, no, please don't install games but uh, here is normal Windows. Um, so sometimes we need to go back to Windows and uh, yeah, for, for diagnostics or something like that. You can do it here, only available if you are an expert. Um, okay, shutdown is to restart the robot controller. Uh, you can uh, select if you want to reboot the, the uh, PC, if you want to reload files, if you change some configurations files, just uh, ensure that you have selected this button. Uh, yeah, Windows is on this robot, so sometimes you have to reboot. Okay, and we have a last button here. Um, you see some more, I programmed them, uh, forget it. Uh, the last one is the help button. In the info tab, you will see uh, which software on the robot runs, which robot you have, the system and all that stuff for information. And another thing is uh, the messages uh, from system software and the documentation. There's a complete documentation how to program the robots, the manuals are inside there almost and you can look to that. Yes, uh, that's the main menu and a quick guide through the uh, smart pad. And as I said in the beginning, this is the smart pad one uh, and I have the new smart pad two here. And there's a, only some uh, changes. In the front, you have two USBs, while in SmartPad 1, you only have that one here on the back. Yeah. You can use that two USBs not only to back up your programs, but also to use a mouse if you're in Windows mode or a keyboard. Everything else is similar to SmartPad 1, but the touch screen is much, much, much more better, yeah. You can use it like a mobile phone, really good. And on the back, we have two of that. You can use it as left hand and right hander very, very well. That's nice. Uh, I like it and it also has a better stand, yeah. <laughs> That's, with this one, uh, uh, it's not the best stand. Okay. That's a new SmartPad 2 and the original SmartPad from the robot. Which SmartPad do you have? Have you any experience with the SmartPad? Please write down in the comments below. Um, if you like to see more videos, 
uh, subscribe to the robotics channel and activate the bell to get informed when I upload a new videos. I hope you enjoy the video and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.